I'm uh, Lillian Matar Peti. Uh, I'm a mother, grandmother, and I'm a United Church minister, and I do special ministry as an interim minister. My story uh, starts with uh, being born in Haifa, Palestine. My father eventually felt the war was coming too close because uh, it became dangerous to live in Haifa, so we moved to Jerusalem, and he rented a house in Jerusalem. But after we'd been in the house for about six months, uh, the fighting started coming closer and closer to our home. And my dad said, okay, tomorrow we're going to go on a picnic. He was in such a hurry that he told my mom, get out, get out, because we want the children to be safe. We don't want any of the children to get killed. One of my brothers uh, talked about how when he was carrying me, he would jump into a hole as he saw bullets coming. And he said it became like a game to see how he can dodge the bullets that were coming at us. And we got uh, to Mount of Olives. We lived on Mount of Olives for five years. And then my father um, had a lot of difficulties financially, but God provided for us. My dad had a great faith. And he was able also to get a job in Nablus, which was f quite a far distance from our home. And he didn't have a car, so he had to live there. And my mother had to seek job, uh, work. But eventually, uh, they applied to the garden tomb in Jerusalem when it needed a, someone to take care of the garden tomb. The garden tomb is believed by Protestants to be the tomb of Christ. And they were there for about 19 years as uh, wardens of the garden tomb. Uh, unfortunately, in 1967, the first day of the war, the Israelis uh, walked into Jerusalem. They came and knocked at the garden tomb gate. The door was broken, and soldiers walked into the, into the yard. And my dad came to meet them and said to them in Arabic, Sabah al-Khair, which means good morning. Next thing, hell broke loose. They shot him many times. And he died. Ever since I was 11 years old, I wanted to go into the ministry. And I wanted a church that will ordain women. And I met Al Forrest. Al Forrest was the editor of the Observer magazine. And he heard about my father's death, and he wanted to interview me. And he came to the apartment I had rented. And he told me that he went and lived among the refugees for about six months. And he wrote the book, The Unholy Land. I was so impressed by Al Forrest and his stand for justice. And later I found out most United Churches were speaking for justice and peace. And one of the United Churches invited me to uh, speak at their church about uh, my experience as a Palestinian. And I was uh, angry at the time of what was happening. And I let them know how angry I was. And it was a UCW group who got up, uh, the women, and each of them gave me a hug afterwards. And I realized that they were loving, caring people that will support justice for all humanity, not only for one race. For me, as a pa Palestinian, the resolution tells me that at last the United Church is taking a step in the right direction. I'm hoping that more churches will realize what's happening in Palestine and will speak up, and the church will back them because it's so hard to think that they feel forgotten. Some of the Palestinian people look at the resolution as more talk. They want more action than talk. Often I hear people say, what can we do? It's such an impossible thing. What you can do is write letters to your government, write letters to the Israeli government, to the Canadian government, to the US government, and speak out for justice. Also support those groups that are working for justice and peace in Palestine. The United Church needs to speak up for justice much louder than they are. It doesn't mean that they close the doors on their communication with the Jews. It's the opposite. It's, there is many, many Jewish people who want to speak for justice for the Palestinians and for themselves. There has to be a balanced approach. We are Christians knowing that God loves the whole world. God loves the Palestinians just as much as he loves 
the Israelis. The Palestinians, Arabs, and the Jewish people are the descendant of Abraham. In my own family name, Matar, you will find Jews who are Matar, Muslims who are Matar, um, Samaritans who are Matar, Christians who are Matar. And it looks like most of us are related in one way or another. So we're all one family and we need to learn how to work together. And the church needs to be the leader.